What you're trying to do with newspapers is probably just one picture that's going to sum up the whole event. Yeah. Now, that could be a detail or it could be a big wide view. So whenever you go to an event, you should try and build up a set, a folio of pictures from the event, from different standpoints, perhaps using different lenses. Four pictures from that would do it, like a big wide angle, something a bit tighter in on one of them, yeah. perhaps. Perhaps an, up, an upright picture on this, on that kind of column of people yeah. would do. Okay. But they need to focus in much more and then open up to a, a proper wide picture. What doesn't really work well in papers is messiness. Because mm. they're quite busy things, newspaper pages. Yeah. And the pictures need to be kind of strong and simple to stand out. At a protest, you probably should focus down on one person, okay. or one face even, or one set of banners. Trying to get some order in the picture, order in the face of disorder, disorder, if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, if you're trying to sort of calm the picture down and simplify the picture, the fewer colours, the better. In terms of colours, uh, is there anything in particular that you look for? We, we always need everything in colour. We're not interested in black and white anymore. No. Black and white looks slightly older on our pages now. Black and white portrait is, 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 is kind of acceptable. If you want a useful head and shoulders picture, mm. you should probably shoot it landscape and not upright. Strangely, yeah. And when you shoot it, you should include the shoulders, because a lot of um, headshots we use and other papers use that we cut them out. There's always a big debate as to whether or not you, you want that eye contact. Well, I re for portraits, I really like the eye contact. Mm. And if you're doing kind of record headshots, you should definitely have at least one straight into the camera. If you're going to do two or three, you should have one square on and one, one kind of looking away each way is probably. Because the other thing we like is to have faces looking into the, the story. A lot of the photography that we see with regards to, uh, so we say some of the tragic events that, that happen, they, they tend to focus on, if you like, the human emotion side yeah. of things. Uh, is that something that's still a taboo in regards to showing grief the, or showing... The, the taboos are not to be too intrusive, I think. Yeah. Unless the event is of such a large scale that that's the way, you know, grief is the way to kind of um, explain what's going on. As to sort of dead bodies, what we look for is to try and accord a bit of dignity to that deceased person. Right. There's got to be a reason for publishing a picture of a dead body. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's got to be, it's not got to be too gratuitous. And also, I think you should, you know, one needs to put oneself in the position of that person. You know, if you're, a, say, a victim in a Rwandan um, genocide event, yeah. you'd probably want your story told. You'd probably want the rest of the world to know what happened. Mm. If you're a casual victim of a, you know, a tragic motor accident, well, you probably wouldn't yeah, want the exactly. world to know how you died. Yeah, exactly. But if your death is part of a kind of a political news story that, hang on, I want, if I'm going to die, I don't want to die for nothing. I want the world to know about this. Do you feel that there are ways in which those demotics contributors on the ground can do more to tap into the local culture? For us to publish a picture that is just daily life, mm -hmm. it either needs to be an extraordinary bit of daily life, or yeah. it needs to be shot in pretty, you know, in a pretty extraordinary, extraordinarily good way. Mm -hmm. It needs to have something a bit more than just this is what the scene looks like outside my door. Mm -hmm. you, know, you need to create something with it as well. Still if you know, if there's no news event, yeah, and you're just thinking. Well, this is really amazing. Yeah, this, you know, every day this happens in um, kind of Morocco or whatever. Yeah. And I think the rest of the world will be interested in this. Yeah. But if it's just like an everyday event, it needs to be created in a pretty kind of art artful way. Yeah. If you like. Your eyewitness centre spread yeah. is like the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. <laughs> the, holy grail. the holy grail. Yeah, That's some people say yeah, that. It's, it's a very difficult thing to get right. There's one or two rules. Yeah in that we think that everything should be in focus. Okay. So that normally means it kind of needs to be shot pretty wide to yeah. make sure you've got that depth of field. Uh, we need to have lots of details in, because the idea of the eyewitness is to hold the reader's attention yeah. kind of for more than a nanosecond yeah. that they normally you know, flick, flick through pictures. So it needs to have a fair amount of detail in. So, you know, like a picture of a large crowd, yeah. 
is always a winner because you know you get all these different expressions on people's faces. But every p- face has to be in focus in that crowd. Mm, if you if we get big areas of uh, muzziness, it's, it's quite ugly. Yeah. You know, we've tried that and we we've, really we've been doing it five years now, so we kind of know which ones work, which ones don't in a way. Um, so lots of detail and. Uh, it just needs to be pretty good quality because obviously we're pulling it up pretty big. Yeah, so yeah. the file size, needs, file, file size needs to be at least 18 megabytes, I guess. Okay. Everyday events is fine. It doesn't have to be news-based at all. Mm. You know, it could just be an extraordinary geographic feature. The other thing is, if you're going to do something like that, so if you're going to do like a huge waterfall or something, it'd be really, it's really great to have a little person to give you scale. Yeah. yeah. Or even a little car or a little truck or something. You know, just that, something to give an idea. Key right? scale things that. You know, pretty uh, intrinsic to it really. To give us an idea of the mm. scale, how many pictures on average would you say? On average we're getting for? about 15,000 a day, but a couple of weeks ago we had 22,000 and when the election comes around it will be 20 plus every day I suspect. Gosh. But we have four people looking through every single picture. Um, we have two people on the news paper side mm. and two people on the kind of web side of news. So everything gets seen, so people shouldn't worry that it just goes into a kind of sort of, you know, a place where it's never going to be seen again, if you like.